I'd like to welcome everyone and uh, to, the, to this board meeting. And uh, I am Greg Olson. I am the president of the Board of Trustees for this year. Um, and in light of that, I'd like to ask Molly to call a, a roll call from the trustees that are in attendance today. Miss Allen? Here. Mr. Harding? Here. Miss Lewis? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Miss Redden? Here. Miss Reynolds? Here. Okay. So uh, I believe we don't have any public, any individuals here with public comments, so we'll skip that portion. Um, I'd like to, uh, introduction to the first item of the director's report, would you like to jump in? Thank you, Mr. Olson. I'm Paula Brumheger, the library's Eva Jane Romain Coombe director, and uh, as is customary here at, this, at, at the start of 2024, uh, to do a recount of 20 23 at the start of 2024 so the first portion of my report is a little bit of a highlight of last year so um, at the start of 2023 we began implementation of our new strategic framework which features five strategic priorities for the organization I'm not going to do a quiz to make the trustees name them but we will just list them here I'm sure you all know they are healthy culture limitless learning reliable information useful resources and welcoming staff my 2023 year in review offers a few highlights of what the library achieved in each of these areas. So first, it's always great to start with some recognition and staff development shout outs. Once again, our staff and the library received recognition for excellence, reinforcing our commitment to healthy culture. This included Peter Bohr, library customer advisor at Forest Park. He was named the Workforce Employee of the Year by the Workforce Council of Southwest Ohio for his outstanding leadership and impact on our region's workforce ecosystem. Our nomination of Peter focused on his taking the lead in exploring services the library can offer to local job seekers and entrepreneurs. He actually developed a series of sessions that harnessed the collective power of his local experts in the area in Forest Park, and his personalized approach to mentoring and coaching has been instrumental in building strong relationships with local businesses and organizations. Also, our first staff cohort of 10 staff members began classes toward the new public service library certificate program in partnership with Cincinnati State. Completion of this program will offer staff a path to management positions at CHPL as an alternative to the traditional master's degree in library and info science. Uh, of course, organizing staff development days this past year, we're offering all staff training focused on the topics of racial equity and the creation of our DEI steering committee with members from a variety of divisions, departments, and whose work is focused on creating a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive environment. Moving along for some statistical highlights, I think everybody around the table here, and it's also available on our website, has our 2023 annual report pretty much hot off the presses. And so a wide variety of resources and services reinforce our reliable information and useful resources, strategic priorities. I pulled out a few that I think are particularly compelling. And I think I've said some of these before in this forum, forum and others, but last year we accommodated more than 59,000 meeting and study room reservations. We faxed and scanned more than 135 documents, and I did put the pages in there. That's 641,000 pages for our customers, all free of charge. We registered more than 340 community members to vote. During Discover Summer, we distributed 26,000 plus free books and hosted over 1,900 programs for over 54,000 youth. We collaborated with United Way, and this is important right now because we're doing that again right now, uh, to provide free tax prep at select locations. The aggregate 2022 tax refund for our customers was 838,421, a 22% increase in the number of taxpayers served compared to 2022. And also, in 2023, the library provided 53,000, just over 53,000 meals and snacks for young people in partnership with our friends at UMC Food Ministry, a federally funded meal program. In addition, staff distributed 19,555 supplemental snacks for youth outside of the meal service, thanks to the generous support from the Library Foundation. I do want to note, if anybody is paying attention and looking at our stats from year to year, that the numbers are a little bit different 
for the UMC Food Ministry, and that has to do with the federal guidelines because that is a federal program. We administer, we don't, uh, we just provide the food. We don't really administer or set the rules. So it is worth noting that the federal guidelines cover that, and they've reverted to pre-pandemic rules. This accounts for the difference. If you look at those large numbers during the pandemic, we had really large numbers. So it's still quite significant, but I did want to note that. Also, speaking of the foundation and development, our development office set a high bar for success in the limitless learning strategic priority last year, including the 2023, whoops, Mary S. Stern lecture delivered by Isabella Wilkerson. Ms. Wilkerson discussed the book, The Warmth of Other Sons, an illustration of the great migration of African Americans in the Jim Crow South to the West and North, as told through the impressively researched stories of three individuals who lived this migration. Special thanks to Dr. Peter and Sandy Stern and the entire Stern Lecture Committee, their generous donation and hard work where we make that event possible. Everybody is well aware we've been working on our facility master plan. So this could be an entire book right here. I'll just do my best in a couple paragraphs to note that we continue to make progress on our FMP with a focus on creating welcoming spaces. In 2023, we opened the new Madisonville branch. Remember last spring it snowed that morning? That was yeah. crazy. Um, and the refreshed Coryville, where we are at today, Pleasant Ridge, Sharonville, and West End branches. We also completed the Price Hill Park led, including a large scale sculpture installation. We have several projects currently in progress, and we're going to hear a little bit more about those later in the Facilities Finance and Audit Committee report. But just to summarize, these include the Hyde Park branch, which is a renovation, Forest Park, which is our new construction, Sims, we're in design, Shiviet, also in design, Delhi in design, and Main Library, which continues in construction, and also Mount Healthy, where we are in design after recently, very recently, purchasing the former CBS building and lot located very close to the current library facility, which is a rental. These are in addition to the 16 projects we already completed since implementation of the FMP in 2019. Finally, rounding out 2023, I do want to take a moment to offer my personal thanks to our trustees. Um, as you all know, last year was a big year for us with our local levy, and everybody here at this table really worked hard. Uh, trustees at the top of that list. Thank you to the board president, retired Judge Nadine Allen, for her support and assistance, especially for her support and advocacy during that local levy effort. Retired Judge Allen attended the Ohio Library Council's annual legislative day and made a great impact when speaking with our local Southwest Ohio legislature legislative delegation about the importance of their ongoing support for both local and state funding. When I was up there, it was like being with a rock star because we couldn't walk down the hallway without people like, retired judge. So it was really fantastic. Thank you to Judge Allen on that. Um, my deepest appreciation to our amazing supporting community and, of course, to our staff members who provide the heart and soul of our great organization. That concludes my review of 2023. I'm going to just move on to some info on 2024 recent legislative activities. So several notable pieces of legislation have been introduced. Representative Matthews, uh, Representative Lampton, and Senator Steve Huffman and George Lang announced the introduction of two plans to eliminate the state personal income tax and the community activity tax, or the CAT, by 2030. The Senate bill is contained in SB 2016. The House bill is in HB 386. Both plans would fully phase out income tax by 2030. The, son the sponsors will be hosting a series of town hall meetings around the state to discuss their plans and get feedback. Current CAT, CAT and income tax revenues estimates uh, which are proposed for elimination in these bills, they represent approximately 45% of the tax revenue for the state's general revenue fund. And as everybody knows, the library's public library fund is a percentage of that general revenue fund. Uh, House Bill 344 is recent legislation introduced by Representative Matthews and Hall seeking to eliminate the authority of political subdivisions to levy replacement property tax levies beginning um, with the election on or after October 1st, 2024. Ours is not a replacement levy and our library has never had a replacement levy, but many entities do, um, so watching that one as well. And finally, the Joint Committee on Property Tax Review and Reform, which was created last June in 23 and consisting of five senators and representatives authorized to hold hearings and make recommendations on pending legislation related to property taxation. They're going to submit their final report to the General Assembly by the end of 2024. It is also, the committee is co-chaired by Representative Romer and Senator Lou Blessing, who is of course from Coleraine Township here in Southwest Ohio. 
State and local officials are being invited to join library leadership on March 25th for a breakfast at our beautiful new Walnut Hills branch, newly renovated. Uh, the Ohio Library Council's annual legislative day, where library advocates hold meeting in Columbus with elected officials, will be April 24th. Locally, as part of our efforts to raise awareness of the importance of the library, Government Relations Coordinator Elaine Fay and I have been meeting with Cincinnati, Hamilton, and Cincinnati and Hamilton County elected le leaders to provide updates and answers. In late January, we were fortunate enough to meet with a newly elected City Council member, Anna Albee. A little bit of an update from diversity, equity, inclusion, and engagement activities. Michelle Matthews around the table today, and as you all know, she was just starting that position in January. Um, She's been really active. She hit the ground running. Her, activi her activities include supporting the Cincinnati, AKA Sigma Omega chapter in celebrating their centennial anniversary in 24, including hosting an ongoing AKA display of the history of the chapter that will be at Walnut Hills in honor of Black History Month and a reception at Walnut Hills on the 15th of February. Michelle also attended the annual meeting of the African American Chamber of Commerce at the Great American Ballpark. Um, and she did connect with Ram Damas, uh, Executive Director of Reaching Out for Kids, a local nonprofit that uses golf as a platform to teach life lessons to kids who need it the most. Um, he's launching a Saturday reading tutoring program for students two through five grades. He's in need of books for his volunteers. Michelle connected him with our outreach department, who is creating an account for this group and will curate a selection of books for the tutors to use monthly. Thanks to Trustee Allen for introducing us to Mr. Damas. Uh, working with Erica Watson, who's the founder and CEO of Intersective Collective, this organization's focus in empowering and advocating for families in the BIPOC disability community with special emphasis on children. Ms. Watson is eager to partner with the library by hosting meetings and trainings at our locations. And finally, leading the DEI steering committee and gearing up for another impactful event and the Popcorn and Conversation series. Uh, the committee is sponsoring three showings for staff over the next several months, beginning in February on the 19th at Deer Park. A panel discussion will follow the featured documentary, The Right to Read. The DEI steering committee views this as a civil rights and social justice issue, recognizing that literacy challenges can significantly impact educational attainment, career choices, and earning potential. Finally, at, uh, ending my report with a little bit more good news, we were very recently recognized as an outstanding community partner. Westwood Works honored CHPL at their annual meeting and appreciation event by presenting us with the Sister Anne Renee Award for Outstanding Community Partner. The library was recognized for the strong partnership between the organization and providing resources and staff for community events. Westwood Works cited the Makerspace, the Westwood Branch, our civic engagement coordinator, everybody knows David Siders, and of course, Kathy Bach, our very own public service director, specifically for supporting efforts to connect Cincinnati's largest neighborhood and celebrate its strengths by building a positive, inclusive, and environmental uh, and vibrant community. And also, just a shout out to Kathy, if you've never been in Westwood with Kathy Bach, it is much like <laughs> walking through uh, an area with a rock star. So Kathy is a rock star of Westwood, so I encourage you all to have that wonderful experience someday. Mr. Olson, that ends my report. Thank you, Paula. Uh, may, I, may I comment? Um, I do want to thank, really, what the library has done for the Reaching Out for Kids, because uh, that program is not only uh, focusing on literacy for children first through fifth grade, but they also are paying to teach certified teachers. And it will be a year round, and it will be continuous. <coughs> and so I uh, thank you to the library for bringing that to Ron Dumas. I want to pronounce right. her name because yes. it will yeah. be her here and there. Yes. And just want to make that correction. And you also said that we distributed 100, we um, made 135 copies. I think you meant to say 135,000. Oh, yes. Did I miss the thousand? <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, I think yeah. she did talk yeah. about how many documents are faxed and scanned. It was 135,000. 249. Very oh. good. 641 pages, something. So, That's yeah. Thank right. you, Judge Allen. Thousand pages. Yeah. 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 Thank 61, you. 641,000. Right. I should just stop talking on the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Diane was like, suddenly, she's like, thousand. <laughs> so I will add one more comment. Um, to all those who are look, listening at home and watching at home, the book, uh, The Warmth of Other Suns, I have read some of it already. And only I found out, I, I picked it up, I was going to take it out of town with me to read. And I got a notice on Amazon that we just bought it. I'm like, why are we buying this book? Well, my daughter's reading at school at, uh, where she goes to Notre Dame, and it's part of one of her you know, class curriculum. And I thought, well, we're going to read it together. Well, I'm 
a bunch of pages in front of her. But it is <laughs> fascinating, <laughs> and I encourage every listener and everyone watching yeah. this to pick it up and read it. Uh, Isabella Wilkerson, the amount of research she has done, and it's basically over 100 years of following these three families, and it is so many things that I had no idea about. So it, it's fascinating, and I'm, I'm thrilled to have a book signed by her that I, I get to read, and it's... That's one of the perks. Yeah, it's yeah, actually, it's that's, yeah. that's crazy, because I actually have the gun. <laughs> it's like a commercial. <laughs> yeah, so I, literally, this is the book. So I am, I really like it. So I want to point that out. So thank you for your, uh, your report. And so well, now we're going to move on to the Facilities and Finance Audit Committee. And I believe, Diane, you'll be uh, I will. taking, yes. Uh, yes. moving forward with that report. In Mr. Hendon's absence. Um, this is the facility finance and audit items. So the facilities and finance and audit committee met on February 5th, 2024 at the main library. Committee member Diane Cunningham Redden was in attendance along with board president Gregory Olson. Staff members Paula Brum Heger and Molly DeFossi were also in attendance. It is the recommendation of the committee that the board take the following action. Main library project update. Turner is working on interior finishes and the project is on schedule. We anticipate six weeks of significant construction activities by the Turner team on the main library. The public art on the plaza is expected to be installed in April. The entryway children's bridge designed as a play element welcoming users to our newly created children's area, first floor, south building, will be installed in the spring. The new furniture and shelving will arrive later this spring. Library staff will continue to be relocated to the updated staff areas and the facilities team will also continue to work on spaces outside of Turner's construction scope. We anticipate reopening the main library midsummer. Confirm the following change orders to modify the interior renovation GMP for current Turner construction. So the chart is up there. This is about a two font. Um, so we have several change orders, some credits, some debits. It all works out in the end. West End Branch Renovation. Thank you. You're Confirm the following change order to modify the West End Branch Renovation GMP for Turner Construction. That was a credit for builders' risk insurance of a $1,304 credit. As a former accountant, we love credits. Hyde Park Branch Elevator Replacement and Renovation. The work on the elevator installation and interior renovation continues. Turner's construction is expected to be completed in the second half of March. The lease on the temporary space expires on March 31st, 2024. We will close our temporary service space at the close of business on Saturday, March 23. Library staff will clean out the temporary space and our renovated space will be ready to open in mid-April. Confirm the following change orders to modify the Hyde Park Branch elevator replacement and renovation GMP for Turner Construction. So we've got a, a charge of $135,000 for some uh, exterior egress stair based on some things that we saw when some walls came down. New Forest Park Branch. Forest Park construction is at the point in the building process where the structure has been enclosed and is protected from the ele elements all often referred to as dried in. There is a temporary roof and sheathing and temporary heat is filling the space. Metal studs, ductwork, and piping are being installed in the interior. The steel for the exterior trellis has arrived. Contractors working on the project took advantage of the winter weather break to install this notable part of the new building design. We continue to work with Greater Cincinnati Waterworks and the City of Forest Park on the water connection and permit. Final drawings for the city review have been issued and we hope to receive the permit soon. Confirm the following change order to modify the Forest Park GMP for Turner Construction. The following change order has been submitted and it is an additional canopy framing for 3492. Mount Healthy Branch Replacement. We hosted a well-attended community engagement session on December 14, 2023 at the new location with a variety of community members and leaders, including the Mount Healthy Mayor expressing their enthusiasm for a new branch project. We shared the high-level design concept as well as obtained feedback on the front facade, which will be added to the existing former CVS facade. SHP quickly completed the design and Turner is in the process of developing the final GMP. Authorize the Eva Jane Remain Coombe Director to modify the branch renovation and replacement 2022 to 2027 agreement along with necessary change orders subs subsequently reported for confirmation with Turner Construction via GMP amendment 
subject to owner and attorney review as follows. GMP inclusive of CMR fee and CMR contingency equal to or less than $4 million with a project bu bu budget of $5,375,000, excluding the property purchase price of 1.975, detailed below. So the chart has the GMP cost and then the um, estimates, the designs. The work is expected to begin during March of 2024 with completion in the fall of 2024. 2024 resources and appropriations update. Subsequent to the December 2023 board meeting, the library received an updated PLF estimate for 2024. The revised estimate of $48,897,250 is $506,200 less than previously reported. than previously reported. Based on anticipated revenues from other sources, we have maintained an overall estimated general fund resources of $91,100,000. Confirm the modification in the PLF estimate reported at the December 2023 board meeting, which did not modify the total reported to the county in January 2024. Revision of the 2024 estimated resources and annual appropriations. In January, we discovered the second half of 2023 employee tuition assistance from the Armstrong Fund, which is payable in 2024, had not been encumbered. So we need to confirm the following change to account for the employee tuition assistance expense of $7,500 and approve the following appropriation to account for the employee tuition assistance for the remainder of 2024, which is $25,000. And those would be accrued in employee benefits. So could I get a motion? One more thing. One more, One more, thing. more? One more authorization. Authorization, authorization to transfer funds. Authorized transfer of funds, 18 million, included in the 2024 appropriations to be transferred from the general fund to the building and repair fund during the year as cash flow permits is determined by the chief finance and facilities officer. Now, yes. could I get a motion, motion. to approve? Thank you. Second. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Harding? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Olson? Yes. Ms. Redden? Yes. Ms. Reynolds? Yes. Thank you. The rest of the report is information only. Exterior sign update. The exterior signs have been installed at Main Library along Walnut, Anderson, Blue Ash, Clifton, Delhi. Township, Green Township, Grosbeck, Madeira, and Pleasant Ridge branches. I think I've taken a few snapshots and texted mm -hmm. them. Along. A few to me. A few, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the new sign design repurposed the existing structures by reskinning the existing structure with a new visual design. The new signs were converted to LED for illumination. We are working to identify the next rounds of signs to be updated. Sims Township branch renovation in addition. We wish to we continue to evaluate options for Sims Township branch renovation and addition to best meet the high demand for service while maximizing site opportunities. Chevy at branch accessibility, maintenance, and renovation. Over the last several months, we've been working with SHP and Turner to determine the options for the elevator addition to achieve full accessibility at Chevy and to clarify the scope for exterior maintenance needs. Currently, visitors have a ramp to access the first floor of the building, but there is no internal option for going to the ground floor where the public restrooms are currently located. Over the next few weeks, we will be working with service staff to identify interior renovations to maximize operations within the existing branch footprint. The goal is to quickly move to construction drawings and then GMP development in hopes of commencing construction by the end of the year. Ongoing FMP implementation planning. The library has continued working with our partners on options for the Delhi branch, Delhi Township branch in accordance with the original FMP timeline of 2026-2027 implementation. We have been and will continue to include townships officials in the community as options develop. Walnut Hills branch accessibility and Madisonville branch accessibility. The resolution of the remaining punch list items has been very slow. We continue to work with Megan Construction on these issues and the project closeout documentation. 2023 year-end summary, the table below, represents the final 2023 available fund balances as reported to the county in January 2024. The variances from the December 2023 report are the result of overall favorable actual activity as compared to the estimates. Energy retrofit three, the Geiler County 
Geiler Company lawsuit. The trial took place in December 2023. Each party will be providing written documentation to the judge in early February with an anticipated decision shortly afterwards. Back to you, Mr. Olson. Thank you, Diane. So I think we uh, will move back to you again for the HR report. How lucky are you today? <laughs> <laughs> I think that every time we run into <laughs> We're all so lucky. Yeah. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Oh, gosh. She's a blessing. <laughs> Bless her heart. Bless her heart. <laughs> so the Human Resources Committee, uh, I'm the chair, Christopher Harding, Karen Lewis, uh, committee members, thank you to Kyla Harden for doing all the real work. <laughs> so policy updates. A goal for 2024 is to continue to review and update policies in an effort to ensure that we are clear, concise, and reflect the current practices of the library. We request approval of the attached policy updates and changes. The revised policy is attached as follows. Hours of work policy, Exhibit A is the current, correct? No, the proposed is A. The a proposed is A. Is a. Uh, yes, where it says proposed <laughs> is A. Current is B. So uh, in a snapshot, in alignment with our work to continue to invest in staff, we are recommending an addition to the current hours of work policy that provides additional compensation to non-exempt staff who participate in a regular on-call location, as well as to provide compensation to non-exempt staff who are required to report on-site to a library location during times it has been deemed necessary to close all library locations, such as during inclement weather or hazardous weather conditions. We are also recommending that managers have the ability to approve overtime when deemed critical to the needs of the agency without first seeking the Eva Jane or Maine Coombe director's approval. If you look at the charts, if anybody has any questions. So we're talking about employees that are hourly employees that must, they are assigned certain weekend and off hours um, jobs that have to be completed or they have to do things when no one else has gone into work. So it's bringing up to really what it should have been. <coughs> Fiscal officer stipend, approve an additional stipend of $5,000 for the duties of the fiscal officer the remainder of 2024. Okay, before you move on, I, I, I compose a few notes about this. Um, as you all know, Molly DeFossi um, is in charge of the finances for our organization, essentially our CFO. And Molly, in addition to that role, has the role of the fiscal, op the fiscal officer of the library. And uh, that comes with a great deal of responsibility and um, potential liability essentially to her and so she has a responsibility to the state with regarding to the annual audit and also to the county for annual reporting and so we're, we're offering her an additional five thousand dollars which is probably really light for the amount of work that Molly takes on and I think it's also it's really important that everyone understands that that this fiscal officer is also mentioned in the Ohio revised code and in terms of relationship, the liability of loss for public funds indicating the intense level of responsibility that this position holds. So, frankly, if you work for me, it would be worth more. <laughs> but we are a library system <laughs> paid for by the public, and um, and I'm very thankful for the work you do. And, you know, it doesn't go unnoticed, and I think most of you who work with her mm -hmm. um, realize thank that as well. Molly. So, so thank you, Molly, thank you. for all and you, you do. You have brought us honor and acclaim every year with the state of Ohio. Yada yada blah blah blah. Yeah. And as a former practicing CPA, uh, the type of uh, audit opinion that we are always blessed with is is a sign of the excellence that she does. And, and plus, Molly is also handling a significant number of uh, facilities and master right. plan uh, efforts. As you have seen, uh, what we've done, 23, we've touched 23 branches already, have another nine that we're working on right now. So that is a lot of work. So thank you, thank you for all you do. Did you just try and poach my physical <laughs> 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 She said she was looking for a new job. She wants to work less hours. Might have happened. Okay. Oh, boy, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> Mr. President, um, could we uh, possibly uh, move to a brief executive session to discuss this item? Yes. Okay. Oh, oh. 
Sorry, we had okay. told the. I, I told him. I said, "Oh, there's no executive session." Um, so can we go back into that room? Can uh, we, we can. Go? We yes. can. We can. Oh, we can move up here, but um, we need to go. Into, we need to name the 3375. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'd like to move to executive session under Ohio Revised Code 3355-17 um, under Section A1. Okay. When, what is A1? A1. Yeah. I know, but what is the high title? Oh, uh, the, the title of it? 3358. 3358-17. Yep, 17. Okay, I'll look up what A1 okay. is. Okay. Okay, um, so we... We, we it might go. be easy for yeah, us to move. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. We can go. Do you want me? I don't have to go. Do you want me to go or not? I don't do we, think we, do we need a vote I don't on think that we'll first or not? Oh, yeah, we do need a vote. We need to yes. vote. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Harding. Yes. yes. Yeah, we're all like, okay, so you're going to move. Yep. Okay. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Okay. We can move on. Yes. Um, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. I think that might be the easiest thing to do. Yes. We do have to do the roll call. Yeah. Did we move? Did someone we move? did not move. Can I get a motion to uh, accept the action items? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Ms. Allen? Aye. Mr. Harding? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Olson? Yes. Ms. Redden? Yes. Ms. Reynolds? Yes. Okay, the rest of the HR report is information only. Rookie of the Year recipient. We are excited to announce that this year's Rookie of the Year recipient is Tricia Fetters, Library Customer Specialist in the Price Hill Branch. Trisha's nomination included the following accolades. Trisha consistently showcases remarkable initiative in her work by seeking opportunities for learning, supporting coworkers, and serving customers and the community. She identifies problem areas and proactively devises creative solutions. Trisha's positive attitude is contagious and serves as inspiration for the entire branch. She consistently approaches her work with enthusiasm, optimism, and a great sense of humor. Customer service is central to Trisha's approach to everything she does. Thanks to her advocacy, Price Hill is now offering an English language for beginners class in partnership with the Adult Learning Center. Trisha's multilingual proficiency is also an asset as she is frequently called upon to assist native French and Spanish speakers at the branch. Both Price Hill and CHPL are lucky to have such a creative, fun, kind, connected, and emotionally intelligent person like Trisha on the team. Please join me in congratulating our Rookie of the Year, Trisha Fetters. Impact Award winner and Bunny Daner Prize recipient announcement. We are also excited to share that this year's Impact Award winner and Bunny Daner Prize recipient of $1,000 is Library Customer Specialist in the popular library, Sarah McGuire. Sarah's nomination included the following compliments and achievements. Sarah's willingness to jump in and take the lead on the Stern Lecture is an excellent example of her dedication to the library and pride in her work. Sarah has the unique ability to execute and communicate effectively at the same time, which made her perfect for this role that she stepped into. Sarah looks at assignments from all angles and rarely misses an issue or an opportunity to make whatever she is working on even better. She worked cross-functionally to flawlessly execute a wonderful event for our community that celebrated the library, what we do for and mean to the community, and that showcased our intrinsic value and mission. Sarah also had the foresight to introduce a new and important element to this year's lecture, a sign language interpreter. Please join me in welcoming Sarah McGuire, our Impact Award winner, and Bunny Dana, Vice President. And, and of course, just as a note, it was Judge Allen who selected Sarah from our many wonderful, <laughs> yes. yes, the President of the Board. So next yeah. year, Mr. Olson will no be pressure. making that selection. So, yes. Well, that's cool. French and Spanish. Yes. 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 That's amazing. Yes. That's Trisha. Staff Recognition Program. The 11th Annual Staff Recognition Program will be held on, held on Sunday, June 9, at the main library beginning at 5.30, with the program to commence at 6.15 p.m. This year, service recognition pins will be given to all staff reaching a five-year increment anniversary. This year's event will recognize our Rookie of the Year, Tricia Fetters, Impact Award winner and Bunny Daner, 
Prize recipient Sarah McGuire for their exceptional contributions and service. We look forward to celebrating those receiving recognition and those who are being honored for their accomplishments. And back to Mr. Olson. And I think Thank you. Ms. Lewis knows she's next yet. So. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Lewis, I believe you're next. We changed the. Uh, oh, I'll yeah. Development. So we're going to move to development, development. committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry for the surprise. No, it's fine. I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Development report committee. Karen R. Lewis, chair. The honorable retired judge Nadine Allen and Diane Cunningham Redding are the committee. This is for information only. Family members of Jean Alva Goldsmith and Louise Goldsmith Traeger, who both have named funds to purchase library materials from the early to mid 20th century, recently visited the main library. Their descendants explored their family's profound influence on children's literature in Hamilton County with a staff guided tour of the Jean Alva Goldsmith exhibit in the Joseph S. Stern Cincinnati Room. The visit offered a chance to delve into various books and newspapers associated with the family, creating a meaningful connection to their legacy, Cincinnati, and what their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents have made possible for the community. The library was the grateful recipient of significant gifts from the Stern Family Charitable Fund in memory of Mary and jo Joseph S. Stern and Photo Focus Biennial for an exhibit at the Walnut Hills French. The Library Foundation, the Foundation's fall campaign and appeal finished strong, though with a decrease of 21% in total dollars raised as compared to the previous year. However, the 2022 campaign was the largest grossing campaign in Foundation history. See the chart below for additional context. Planning is already underway for the spring campaign and appeal that will focus on Library Giving Day on April 3rd, 2024. The Library Foundation was the grateful recipient of significant gifts from Robert Dorsey, Julie Beatty, Beatty, Dr. Patricia Hill Collins, the Johnson Foundation for Workforce Development, and the Ed and Joanne Hubert Foundation of Discover Summer. Friends of the Public Library, Books and Booze. The adult book fair for the Friends of the Public Library is scheduled for March 13th, 2024 from 5 to 8 p.m. at 9 Giant Federatorium. This was a very popular and successful event last year with much excitement about its return this year. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Yes, back to you. We're going to move on to the strategy committee. Or operations, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. Prepared to, do, to present the operations committee, Nadine Allen, chair of that committee, and I want to thank Kathy Balk, who's here for preparing this report, our public services director. So we start with uh, Stephanie Lemming, branch manager here at the Coryville branch. She began her library career as a shelver. See what happens if you start? <laughs> Entry level and work your way up. <laughs> we always encourage that. <laughs> and that she started at the North Central branch. She holds a Bachelor of Arts from The Ohio State University and a Master's in Library and Information Science from Kent State University. Stephanie has a variety of library work experiences, including roles at The Ohio State University Libraries, Upper Arlington Public Library, and Columbus Metropolitan Library. After serving as youth librarian at Lane Libraries and Youth Services De Department Manager at Midpoint Library, Stephanie joins CHPL as children's librarian in 2016. Committed to professional development, she completed the Tomorrow's Managers Program and serves on the Ohio Library Council's Professional Development Committee. Stephanie was promoted to branch manager in Coryville in October 2022, showcasing her leadership and dedication to advancing library services. Thank you, Stephanie. Where are you? Sort of there you are. <laughs> Not far from me. So if she can. I think you have some prepared comments. I, I okay, I'm going to turn it over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the Coryville branch. Thank you to the board and to senior leadership for having me here today. 
Uh, I would like to share our Coryville journey. Originating in 1907 and with the last significant update in 1997, we underwent a major refresh beginning in November of 2022. The recent project involves structural enhancements, including the dome being repaired and painted, which highlights the original stained glass skylight, internal repairs such as new doors and windows, and exciting additions like study rooms and a class ca castle playset for in the children's area. During the closure, staff served at other branches, ensuring seamless support. I also went on maternity leave and later assisted at various locations that needed management support. We labeled this period our recon time, which allowed us to bring new ideas back to Coryville. Despite being away, we stayed connected to our Coryville community. I attended community meetings and our children's librarian, Megan Bambrick, continued outreach, making 45 visits to schools and daycares for a total attendance of 915 children and teachers. Returning on June 26, 2023 for our July 6th reopening, we've continued refining our space, offering services like distributing at home COVID tests and resuming passport services. To finish, I would like to thank the board for its support of the facilities master plan and the Coryville project. Thank you to Molly DeFossi and Kathy Bach for your co coordination and leadership through these projects. Thank you to our regional manager, Michelle Elliott, for her support and guidance as we move back to normal library service. And thank you to our temporary branches and the many departments that supported Coryville and many other projects, including facilities, computer services, ILS, and MSA. Finally, the biggest of thank yous to Team Coryville, who jumped in to become valued team members at their temporary locations, who came back to a branch that was both their old branch and all new at the same time, who continue to focus and who continue to focus on customer service and helping the people that come through our doors every day. <coughs> Thank you, and please be sure to visit the library upstairs before you go today. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Thank you for that report. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and the next uh, item is the Cincinnati Enquirer Photo Archives Inventory and Rehousing Complete. The <coughs> genealogy and local history and popular library departments completed the inventory and rehousing of the Cincinnati Enquirer Photo Collection. The collection covers 1945 through 1995 and consists of around 1 million photos divided among 35,000 different folders. Online customer requests will go live in March of 2024 and these requests will determine our di digitization priorities. Once digitized, the images will live on the digital library for all to enjoy. Now maybe, I think the Cincinnati Enquirer might be uh, part of our meeting today and is listening in and so we want to thank you for what you've provided to the library if you are. The science of reading. The science of reading refers to an interdisciplinary body of scientific evidence that both informs how students learn to read and write proficiently and explains why some students have difficulty with reading and writing. In a continued effort to provide support for our uh, community, related to Governor DeWine's executive order in support of implementing best instructional practices aligned to the science of reading. We have offered several opportunities for staff to learn more about this topic through training and discussion. These opportunities include decodable books discussion, learn how our collection can help emerging readers build the decoding skills necessary to learn to read, early literacy 101 workshop, prepare staff, to offer early literacy story times and work with parents and community partners to share early literacy concepts, promote kindergarten readiness, and build community support. Virtual program chat. Share ideas for programming designed to motivate and encourage young readers, such as book clubs. COSI kits. Thanks to the support from the Ohio Library Council, the State Library of, of Ohio, and the Center of Science and Industry, that's what COSI stands for, it's in Columbus, Ohio, my hometown, <laughs> CHPO, received 500 free water, lions, water science learning lunchbox kits. Each kit contains all the supplies and instructions to help young people explore a variety, variety of water-related science activities. Kits are being used to support STEM, S-T-E-M programming after school and with homework, homework homeschooling families. Plus, kids get to take their kid home to continue the fun with a coupon for free admission to COSI. Total solar eclipse with the Cincinnati Observatory. <laughs> now this one, I'm already saying I want my freebies. 
<laughs> the, the library is giving. I get first dibs. <laughs> Put <on> a plug. <laughs> okay, this Toller, total solar eclipse is coming to Ohio on Monday, April 8th from 1.52 to 4.24 p.m. I've already read in the paper that they expect hundreds of thousands of people to be converging uh, into, this, into this area for the total eclipse. For this eclipse, most of Hamilton County will be in 99% totality, with our, with our Harrison branch experiencing a 100% totality around 3.09 p.m. CHPL is excited to celebrate this once-in-a-lifetime event in Hamilton County with all our residents. Eclipse glasses will be available for on-site use at all CHPL, CHPL locations on the day of the event. All branches will host Eclipse viewing parties that day to celebrate this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity in Hamilton County. CHPL received 5,000 Eclipse glasses for free through a partnership with StarNet and we are purchasing an additional 4,000 glasses to ensure all branches have a, supply, a sufficient supply the day of. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not sure what library I'll be at, but I'll be there. <laughs> Leading up to the event, branch libraries will host events presented in partnership with the Cincinnati Observatory to spread awareness of the eclipse and a safe sun viewing. Additional upcoming programs and events, February 15th through the 26th, CAM, C-A-M, Youth Art Lab, Black History Month, Forest Park Branch. February 17th, Jean Alva Goldsmith, Read Aloud Storytime, Downtown Library. February 21st, first, Senior Lunch at the Library in Deer Park Branch. Have you gone to that yet, Diane? No, maybe we should go to that. Yeah, Diane and I, Diane and I will be there to bring our usual like fun that. and mayhem. Um, <laughs> February 22nd, backyard chickens at the Harrison. What are they doing to the chickens? Are they ra raising them or eating them? Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh Something the the eggs. Eggs. Oh, they get the eggs. eggs. They didn't say. It's just backyard chickens <laughs> will be the Harrison branch. It's going to be the most heavily <laughs> attended program we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Do we get chicken sunglasses for the? <laughs> yeah, what's, what's our chicken gift? Chicken sunglasses. Definitely not allowed to sit by. <laughs> you heard you about that. I did. She told us to behave because yeah. the, yeah. the choir was watching. <laughs> well, February, well, you said your mom said ours are fine. Your mother. So, February 27th, get ready for the eclipse with astronomer Dean Regus at the Harrison branch. Mark that down, February 27th. And March 11th, researching the history of your house, Pleasant Ridge branch. And that concludes my report. Thank you, retired judge. Okay. For all the extra. <laughs> all right, that moves us on to the strategy committee. And I think uh, all right. this is you, Christopher. Together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Beth, for preparing this report. Partnership breakfast. We hosted a successful partnership appreciation breakfast on January 24th at the Price Hill Branch Library with more than 50 representatives of community organizations and attendants. We're proud to collaborate with the host, Magnificent Morsels, a black-owned catering business from Finley Kitchen who provided the breakfast. And I was delighted to deliver remarks on behalf of the board. It was very well attended and uh, a great way to thank all of our partners. Uh, voter information. Uh, we updated and provided timely nonpartisan voting information on our website to prepare our communities and staff for the election season. Thanks to our partnership with the Greater Cincinnati Voter Collaborative and the League of Women Voters, we were able to provide concise, factual, and nonpartisan voting information. New resources this year include voter education information from election protection from the Ohio Voter Rights Coalition. 513 Relief Bus. Based on community need defined by the Hamilton County Commissioners, uh, we are planning to host the 513 Relief Bus at the Bond Hill, Forest Park, Green Township, and Monfort Heights Library Branches. Uh, which we actually we just had the Forest Park one on Monday um, and I did want to give a shout out to uh, Forest Park branch manager Sean Davidson, uh, Peter Bauer and uh, of course David Siders was there um, so thank you to the uh, Forest Park branch for hosting it was a, a great event we had about 500 folks um, out on the bus uh, we pushed out 12,000 pounds of food uh, thank you to Free Store Food Bank so that was tremendous and um, you know Again, just so much appreciation for our staff who has stepped up uh, to be a resource for this community. So thank you for that. 
And I want to put in a plug and thank the Greater Cincinnati Voter Collaborative. Uh, I've been working with them for years, and, and uh, the library has really leaped in and really uh, helped to sponsor the activities and provide the services to the public, which is you know why we continue to be a beloved institution. That's right. Thank you you still have time to update your voter registration ahead of the yes, that's right. That's right. That's what right. is that date? <laughs> February twentieth. February twentieth. February twentieth. All right. Thank you. February twenty first. Yeah. Here, here. Don't forget. <laughs> we plug it every time we can. That's right. That's right. That's great. Um, moving on, so services at the bus included free primary medical care, services for older adults, free printing for birth certificates on demand, and a host of other social and governmental services. Staff engagement on wayfinding signage for Main Library. On January 18th, uh, Group 4 Architecture, who CHPL engaged in 2018 to develop our facility master plan, came to facilitate wayfinding sessions with Main Library staff. Group four met with 82 staff members to discuss how best to help our customer experience at the downtown main library branch once it opens. Beyond these engagement sessions, a small wayfinding core group made up of staff from the services, strategy, facility, and technology and logistics division is developing wayfinding recommendations. Adult learning and literacies. The adult learning center conducted 56 classes in January with 622 in attendance. Our in-person and online classes for individuals who are English language learners continue to be popular. We are busy preparing for spring classes, and here are just a few. A reliable information, a real or scam, how to protect yourself from falling victim. Uh, too much, please unsubscribe me. Reliable information, <laughs> how, to find the in how to find the answers, shop smart, presented by the Ohio Attorney General's Consumer Protection Division, um, career classes in new person in GED math classes, introduction to AI, life skills and interest classes, um, classes provided for Explore CHPL resources, series highlighting Libby, LinkedIn learning, and Weiss Financial, talk and trails, and freehand brush painting. So look out for that if you're interested. Uh, marketing and communications, marketing published CHPL's annual report today, an overview of the library's accomplishments, statistics, and financials for 2023. This report also features stories of select CHPL customers whose lives have been positively impacted by the library. A digital version is available on our website. And to complement the annual report, two videos are also in production and will be accessible from our website as well. Uh, that, which overviews the 23 facility master plan implementation and a year in review. In January, the Explorer CHPL newsletter was mailed out to more than 20,000 CHPL customers ages 60 plus who do not have email addresses associated with their library accounts. This edition of the mailer includes information about free tax help, the winter checkout challenge, featured upcoming events, and a snapshot of our facility master plan progress. Uh, in August of 2023, the marketing department debuted software to help all staff create library branded templates that help increase awareness about library events and services while keeping CHPL's brand consistent across all locations. Since then, 280 brand templates have been created for event flyers and posters, display templates and calendars. Finally, outreach services. Thanks to financial support from the Library Foundation, outreach services provided iPads and technology support programming to seven acres senior living in Clifton. 15 seniors in need now have access to Libby, Canopy, and other resources. In addition, the department visited with the Macular Degeneration Support Group at Twin Towers to provide residents with an overview of services and to answer tech questions. Outreach continues to provide library materials to educators throughout Hamilton County. And the 2023-24 school year is at its highest level in a decade. Currently, the department serves 89 schools with 569 teachers with monthly classroom collections. So that's wonderful. That concludes my report. Thank you, Chris. And this will move us on to the technology committee and Colleen. Thank you, and thank you, Holbrook, for preparing this report. Um, 
starting with enhanced overdrive support starting in January 2024 the materials selection and acquisition department has used new funds allocated to digital resources to enhance service and overdrive home to the Libby app the library's primary ebook and e audiobook vendor materials selection and acquisitions efforts include contending with a post pandemic cost increase of 79.6 percent mm. Thank God we passed that levy. Circulating 109,645 more items in January 2024 mm -hmm. than in the same month in 2023 while shortening the wait list times a bit. Dropping the holds ratio and thus the wait time on the top one on the 100 top circulating USA Today bestsellers, such as House of Flame and Shadow, from 5.3 holds per copy to four holds per copy. Mm -hmm. Increasing the budget for no weight titles by over $50,000 a month, resulting in 4,456 yeah. instant checkouts and overdrive by our customers in January. The statistical highlight reflects the interplay of circulation, expenditure, and wait time and overdrive. My book club thanks you very much. <laughs> um, do we have the, the statistical highlight here? I, not to interrupt, Ms. No, Rollins, go ahead. but this is um, kind of compelling, and I know that Holbrook, oh my gosh. along with our statistician, wow. worked wow. on this. So, um, Holbrook, do you want to talk about what this really signifies here? Sure. The, Look at um, that. the red is the expenditure per January, so that's January over the last number of years. Is the, are the green pillars, oh, yeah. and then the number in the green pillar is the wait time uh, represented during that month uh, of that year. So you can see that the wait time kind of uh, has fluctuated, but peaked out at 24.4 days uh, to wait for an item, and then we've been able to drop it a bit with this added expenditure, or the added money into the overdrive collection, and this is just overdrive. And then, but you can see what the, the costs have increased substantially, as, as has the use. But the yeah. use is just going, right. going crazy. <laughs> so um, we really appreciate the, uh, the extra funds to be able to support overdrive. So the cost is doubled in five, in six right. years. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about so the, ebooks. And we kept yeah. the, the, the number of days waiting about the, Is there a goal you have, Holbrook? For Zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> We tend to think um, of 21 days because a cycle of waiting is three weeks. So um, we're not doing, we've never really hit that except in 2021, which was probably an odd year. Um, so we are working to bring that down, um, but I thought that this was a good illustration of what Ms. Reynolds had been reporting about the continued cost increase, and we're doing our best to keep up with it. Overdrive is Libby, so a lot of people know Overdrive by the name yeah. Libby. You use okay. it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious, how do those numbers kind of match with our other sister libraries, I guess, who are also We actually do uh, quite well. We've done a comparison across um, comparable libraries, and we're uh, in the, uh, the better half of the, the middle group, I would say. So there are, um, you know, Dayton has perennially done better than us for whatever reason. You mean on wait times? On wait times, yes. but, the, um, but otherwise throughout the state, we're we're more advanced. Well, I just want to interject that the population of Hamlet County and Montgomery County is like three times larger. So we have a huge, much larger group of demand yeah, for it's, we anything. Have extraordinary so demand. comparable would be Columbus or. Well, and if you think about the information from, I don't know where I sent that out, the um, Overdrive did a publication of the top. Um, usage and our library was one of the few independent libraries on that a lot of them are consortium so there are a bunch of libraries but oh. to uh, judge allen's point i can't remember there was somebody else in ohio on there maybe <laughs> cuyahoga can't remember but portland there were right. some but there were very few individual libraries so our use is quite tremendous and uh, that and just that's overdrive and there are yeah. other places that don't offer as many other yeah. uh, digital resources like cuyahoga doesn't offer hoopla we offer Hoopla, we're spending a lot of money with Hoopla, so this just represents Overdrive, but we have a, an extraordinary range of offerings. Does this include audiobooks too? Or yes, that's both so audiobooks. Both so it's multiple models as well, so it's some yes. of it is pay per uh, download, yeah. and then some of it is uh, leasing for a period of time or for a number of checkouts. So our material selection and acquisition department is you know, really working hard to keep up with all the different types of models. So if we had to increase the funding, then the wait period would be like ridiculous. In other words, this is just to, 
yes, yeah. yes, yes. It would be. Yeah. So spending more to serve yeah. our public and hopefully in time to lower that uh, yeah. wait period. Thank you. I want to thank you, Ms. Reynolds, for bringing it up and making it a, a primary consideration. Ebooks is what everyone's using these days. Yeah. <laughs> All right, payment systems phase one complete. By the end of January 2024, nine IT staff, mostly from computer services, had installed the 50 new pay for print and computer reservation systems across all locations, completing phase one of the payment systems project. Phase one includes an upgraded customer experience when paying for prints and copies, as well as a more user-friendly version of Wi-Fi printing. Remind us, how many free prints do people get at the library? Well, it's we have a purse now of five dollars, so uh, that is based on twenty free color copies, uh, which are more expensive, and we undercharge for color copies. Just so you know, so we're very generous, and there's no one else in the state that is offering as as uh, um, a plant to like we're offering. Thank you. Payment systems phase two and new self-check machines. As reported in the December 2023 board report, the library is investing in an upgraded self-check experience for customers and staff. The new self-check hardware will roll out concurrently with phase two of the payment systems project. Phase two will provide an enhanced point of sale at all locations for items such as vinyl for making a banner in the makerspace and lost book charges. Currently, there is a convoluted process to pay for these items on the self-check machines. The new and improved process will ease the experience, diversify payment types, divorce it from the self-checkout machines, and cost the library less money in the long run. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. Okay, so we move on to consent agenda items. Minutes of the annual meeting held December 12th, 2023. We can do them as a group. Okay, yeah. minutes of the regular meeting held December 12th. Um, monthly financial reports, communications report, contributions, gifts, and donations, personnel reports, statistical report, statistical highlights, January's and overdrive, investment report, and approval of consent agenda items. So we need a motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so before we end, I'd like to thank Beth Yoke um, for her five or six years of service here for the library. We, we know you're moving on and we wish you the best and uh, we hope to see you around. But thank you very much. <laughs> Beth, thanks for making me look good with these reports. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Yeah. You will be missed. Yes. <laughs> now we get, uh, need a motion to, to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Second. You're all full of first. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Do we need an eye? Yeah. Roll call? Yeah. Here, here. Yeah. Here, here. All in favor. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.